All right, we are recording and we've got the shopping cart project. And this is good actually, because it shows too how to like pull down and set up an existing Django project. So for the sake of the recording, just to recap, we've got the shopping cart pair programming app that Zainab and I did demonstrating how to kind of send data using Ajax requests with Axios from the browser to the server and kind of the full flow of that with, with Django ORM. And I just uh, pulled down her project uh, from the GitHub repo. And now I need to create a Python environment for it and, um, and a database for it and install dependencies. And then we should be good to go. So let's see, I haven't actually done this. Um, I'm gonna go to my virtual environment directory, which is off of my home directory, which is what this tilde slash here is. And Python dash M. Yep, that's what I want, but I don't want it. Okay, shopping cart project. Awesome, I've got um, Python virtual environment with the same name as our project. And I'm gonna go ahead and activate it. We're now in our Python or our Python virtual environment is activated. And now I'm gonna pop back uh, to where the, um, the, the Django project is. Let's see, so that is demos and notes, week seven, day five. And you want to go into the shopping cart project. And let me open VS Code there. Let's do that right here. Uh, and I'm going to have to start up my Django environment again. And we've got this stuff. So I know I need the database. Um, so I'm going to take care of that first. And I want to look in the settings.py file just to confirm the database name. Shopping DB. Awesome. Um, now I do need to install Django and Psycho PG3. And I do believe that with the Python virtual environment, it doesn't matter where I do that because it gets installed in the virtual environment directory. Uh, Psycho PG, Psycho PG2, correct? It's two, yeah. Thank you very much. Awesome. Um, so we got those guys going. This is good for me too, because this is actually the first time I've done this uh, with like an existing project. And all that looks good, which is great. So this is also, I imagine the benefit of the, uh, of that fixture thing. Yeah. Now you can just load data. Yeah, exactly. I was just thinking about that too, yeah. And so now I want to do Python manage py uh, make migrations, I believe, and then shopping. I think I need the app name. Does that seem right to folks? Shopping cart. Um, actually, let me do it. I'm a little worried that I got something wrong. Why there's a shopping cart app and a shopping cart project, but I think I'm not going to worry about that. And I should be right. Oh, thank you, Alicia. Okay. I think I'm just getting familiar with I Django. I think you might already have migrations, right? Can you check your app? Oh, you are right. You are totally right. 
Yeah, so I yeah. think it's ready to run. Yeah, that's great. That's awesome. Um, right, did we change anything to the models? We didn't. I'm gonna I'm gonna run the make migrations anyway, just for because it, it, it's just such an ingrained habit. I'm like 99% sure we didn't make any changes to our models after running that initial migration. But just in case, this will confirm that for us. And indeed, there are no changes. Yeah, you're totally right, which is awesome. And if there were changes, I would have gotten a little worried because I wouldn't have remembered what they were. Um, and now we should just be able to run migrate. Awesome. And now manage py and i think it was load data. data yeah yeah thank you let's see here oh i need to specify the all oh, right so that is just called so we've got carts and we've got items so let's do carts let's do items awesome and I'm going to close that for the moment. And I'm going to bring everything up here into tabs because it's a bit easier. Um, I'm going to make a new tab. And from here, I'm going to log into I think it was it's a shopping. Thank you. Um, and uh, Awesome, we got our cart, we got our... It's not plural. Oh, thank you. Awesome, we got our items. Awesome, so we're set. And all this stuff, I've just, I, there's just all these, I'm just always kind of taking steps to double check that everything is I, I expect. Because this stuff just gets so complicated that it's so easy to miss something. And I've just learned like, I always want to be doing that. Because it only takes I a couple think that's seconds. Good to see too. If we end up, you know, working together as a team on something like this, so that's good. Yeah, totally, totally awesome. So let's let's start the server. So let's pop back over here. Um, Python manage py run server. Python manage py. And let's go to this URL and make sure that that's working. Awesome, we're, we're cooking. And that works, that works. The C cart button doesn't do anything yet. And if I refresh the page, yeah, hard refresh, awesome. So everything, so this is great. And, and just even doing this, like it's really, especially like, like we're starting to get into more complex applications where there's a good amount of setup and stuff. And this is why like readme docs are so important and then like writing scripts and things to help too. But um, it's very easy to run into issues just getting like someone else's project properly set up and running. So this is actually great to, to walk through um, and for me to walk through. So this is great. And so now we can do what we actually wanted to do which is add a checkout page, which is what this seat cart button is gonna do, which I think I'll just change to read checkout. Um, so let's see here in our templates in our index, let's change C cart to check out. And we've got that. And so basically to, to kind of step through what's going to go, what's going to happen here, it's going to be pretty straightforward. It's going to look something like this, um, check out slash cart ID. And then the user, and really this should be an href, I think instead of an onclick, because we're really, it's really a link is really what we're doing. The button is there just for kind of user interface purposes. 
um, but it's really a link. And the critical piece is that we're passing the cart ID in the link. Now, right now we only have one cart that exists in the whole database. So this doesn't really matter, but this is exactly how you would do it with a user account and user authentication. Like a user would log in and instead of a cart ID, we would have like a user token that indicates that the user is logged in and uniquely identifies who the user is. And that would be in the URL. And then because when we click on this, we're sending this request over to Django. Django gets that identifying information and can grab all the information we need from the database. Um, so that's kind of the approach that we're gonna take, but we need to build a couple pieces here to get that going. Um, the first thing we need to do is pass the cart ID in because we're not doing that in, um, in this template because we haven't needed it yet. So let's go ahead and do that in, I want to say views. Yep, and we've got the cart. And over here, we've got data, data, and let's just do, um, let's just pass the whole cart object in, why not? So, and assuming, let's just say that this was right, like a cart button in your nav bar, would mm -hmm. you have to pass in the cart then to every single page on your website? When you say every single page. All right, never mind. You would just send it to like your layouts form where the where the button is is put initially, right? Yeah. Yeah, we do, you are correct. Like what we really need is the cart ID. And actually I'll, let me change this because for now I think that specificity is, is good. Um, cart.id. And, and I think it'll help illustrate kind of the information flow too. And you're correct that like, basically, you know, the nice thing is when we have Django build a site, it's just very easy to grab all our information from the database but we need that one bit of identifying information that tells us like where to get the stuff from. And, and in this case, that's the card ID. So we would need to pass that somehow to whatever page, wherever we need to be like interacting with the database essentially. Um, and just kind of for an example of that, like now we have cart ID here. So we can do something like um, button, href um, checkout slash ID. And I'm not sure if that route is quite right, but that, that's a good start. Um, and what we need to do then is we do need to create a new route now. And we're just going to call it checkout. And then we're going to do, um, oh man. I need to uh, Google the syntax for this. I have it right here, Adam. Oh, Alicia, that would be great. Thank you so much. Um, can you just throw it in the Zoom chat? Yeah, it's there. Thank you. Oh, perfect. Int. Yep. Awesome. Thank you. Um, yeah, and and Luis, to answer your question, um, I think a button can accept an href. I could be wrong. We are going to find out. Um, buttons kind of get abused all the time to function like, like links. I and think like, you have to have the trailing slash here, right? Yes, I think you're right. Thank you. Yeah. And Django is particular about that. And then we probably want the trailing slash in the template, uh, index.html. Let's try that. So we'll get there in a minute. 
I want to build just like the world's simplest view to start with. And so let's do, let's see, we have index, we have cart items. Let's add it just down here. Um, let's see here. I'm going to copy this line. And here we're going to call this checkout.html. And I believe the only data, yeah, we're going to have to do some work here. Um, in fact, we're going to have a lot of duplicate information. In fact, I'm going to copy and paste everything that's here. But the truth is that like at this point, because I think we even copy and pasted some stuff from over here, like, at, like the next step would be to refactor this code so that we don't have quite so much duplicate logic. But this is also a great example of like how, copying and pasting being useful and how codes and how code ends up being really messy because you can imagine how if like people are copying and pasting all over a code base and then you need to change something and you have to go to like a thousand different places to change it it can be a problem so here we could just leave this hard coded because there really is only one request id but um Really, what we want to do is request dot. Oh man, how do we? Let's see how we do this. Tango request URL param. Um. I think you have to give it. Um, you're trying to grab the cart. Yeah, let's just try, let's just try um, get and see how that works. Let's see if that works. We'll, we'll find out. Um, and I did just copy and paste a ton of code. So I'm going to walk through it and make sure it's all relevant. Um, and you can kind of see like, that's why the cart ID is sort of like the magic number here. Cause we use it to get everything. We get the cart, we get the cart items, we get all that information. Um, and truth be told, our checkout page actually is, it's gonna be almost exactly the same as the other page. Um, let's see for item and items. I think we wanna do all of this the same. I think we can use all of this stuff the same way, to be honest. Um, we don't need that. And we've got these two lines of code. We've got the data, we've got the cart ID. So I think that should do it. I'm just wanna go back to my page and make sure I haven't broken anything accidentally. I haven't, we're good. And then the next step is instead of index, we want checkout. And the truth is, I think I'm going to be able to pretty much copy the index. I think it's gonna end up being incredibly similar, which is, which is great. And I, I am just gonna copy all of this. Um, and put it on the checkout page. And really the difference is we don't need Axios yet, and we don't need our JavaScript yet, because right now, all I'm really going to have the checkout page do is just display the information, I think. Because since we copied that same code, all of this stuff is the same. We don't need an add item button. We just want to show the stuff. Um, 
and we've got the quantity, we don't need this fancy stuff here with this span because we're not using JavaScript to modify anything. I'm kind of thinking through this as I'm doing this. And the spans, remember, just create like horizontal. They don't create a new line. So all this stuff is going to end up on the same line. And this button here would, in fact, purchase button. So the question now is what, if anything, I got wrong and if this works. So I think the next step is to refresh the page, open the terminal so we can see what kind of issues we have. And before that, too, I'm actually going to go to here. And this is something I like to do. I'm going to clear this. And then whatever we see here, we know is relevant to whatever just happened. Um, okay, and I probably have my URL formatted wrong. From what I looked up, href doesn't work with buttons. Thank you. Okay, that's unfortunate. So maybe we would have to wrap the button in an href. Like something like, let's see if that works. If not, I'll just get rid of the button altogether. And your linked A tag too. Yeah, thank you. And I might have something wrong here too. We'll see in, in a minute. Um, I think you but, have to have the leading slash here. But I might I might be wrong about that one, but I'm not hundred percent either. So let's see. Okay, awesome. This is great. It took us where we wanted to go. Um, so that route I think is being formatted correctly. Now it looks like checkout got an unexpected keyword argument cart ID. Let's see where this is coming from. Da, 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 shopping cart project. Um, I'm pretty sure it's it's probably like me trying to get the cart. Check out. Let me look here. Yeah, I yeah. think you have response instead of car ID, maybe. Oh, let's take a look. Um, let's see here. Let me get rid of, well, we might need that. Here we go. So request, request. Um, was there somewhere in particular? So like your views, your URL is passing in the car ID, right? So wouldn't your function oh, have to take that in? Is that, I, I might have that wrong. Is that how it works where the cart, where it gets passed in here? I might yeah, have this part like wrong. The example from this morning, it was request comma question ID. So it'd be cart ID. And then I don't think, I don't think you would need line seven at that point, because you'd be passing it in with your, with the href. Got it. I may have gotten that wrong. That If so, that'd be great. Let's give this a shot. Yeah, that, that looks great. And now if I do this, we should get an error. Yep. Because the cart doesn't exist. Um, and in fact, we could, so we don't need that print statement. Um, we should do like a try. So before we start like adding more yeah, stuff, we don't really need to add much. JavaScript. Yeah, the great part is there, I guess there's I hardly thought any that your JavaScript, JavaScript here. 
would send this somewhere else. And so I think I must right. be, have a missing link here. So right. when we, so when you made the, so if you don't mind, can we follow the flow that's like in my head? So go to the, uh, so index HTML. And the, add the your add item button, right? And mm -hmm. that, and then can you show me the template? Yeah, totally. So um, that has, oh, oh button yeah. on click this function, which passes in data item, the item ID. So patches in the item ID. And then can you go to your JavaScript? Yeah, one moment. Let's see, where is that static file? Yeah, the JavaScript is totally unrelated to the checkout page. Yeah, so I just wanna see how that, okay. So post cart item, then function. Okay, so that line on line 10, so you would need that then like 10 through 13, that's if you want to then do something with that data on that same page. Correct, like, and that is how with that data on a different page or not? Would that be a different route similar to like just what we did? Say that again. Like right now we're grabbing an element that's on the index HTML mm -hmm. page, which is where that form is that started this whole JavaScript part. Mm -hmm. So can you grab elements on a different page or not? I see. If I think not, not really, if I understand your question. And I think, yeah, let me walk through the whole flow too with going from the browser to the code. And I think that'll help okay. a lot. Yeah, yeah, that would be great. Yeah. So from the very beginning, when I load this page, the flow starts with our backend code, right? The browser sends a get request to the server um, for the, the, the root path. The server says, ah, oh, I got an HTTP GET request um, on my root path. Uh, this is the, the view method that, that I use. Oh, and let's see, go to definition. Awesome. And then we have this view method here. We could get this cart ID from the database. Um, this is like the kind of the, the, the tricky bit. Like are you, this is where if we were doing login, that's how we would get that information. For now, we're kind of hard coding it. Um, but let's just kind of assume that. Um, like, okay, the user has logged in and we have the, the ID for their cart or for them. Um, we use that to grab anything that's currently in the user's cart. Like maybe I added some stuff and then I walked away and it logged out or timed out. Um, and we go ahead and do some formatting so that we put together information of all the items in the cart and the quantities of those items in the cart. And we pass it over to this template index HTML. And all of this is happening on the server. Django's doing all this work. And here we grab Axios as a, well, let me rephrase. We build an HTML page on the server with all of this stuff. So Django is building this, all this stuff is hard coded, yada, yada, yada. None of this HTML has gotten to the browser yet. Django gets here and says, ooh, there's some special Django template code. I need to do some work. Um, and it does some Python stuff. And that data that we got from the database is sent in here. And this HTML page is built. And it hasn't been sent back to the browser yet. And when we're building this HTML page on the server with our, our Django code, this is the bit that is the sort of the magic connection to the checkout page because all we need is that cart ID to find everything in the cart. So here on the server, we construct this URL, this checkout URL with the cart ID that we want for this user. Um, again, we only have like one cart because this is just a test example. But I think you can imagine how, like if we had different users and we made this a little more robust that um, this cart ID could be one of many possible carts. And we create that link 
And that's all getting done on server side and gets sent back to the browser. And we can see that if we look at the network request tab, we can kind of see that flow right here too. This is that very initial request. We can see like there's the headers, the response, the information in the HTTP response, yada, da, da, da. Um, like you can even, if you click, right click on this, I think if I right click on it like this, um, copy, there's a way to see the whole thing as plain text, which is how it's really sent. That's a little bit of, of, of a tangent, but like that's, that's what an HTTP request looks like. It's just text. Um, the response comes back, copy, let's see, response headers. So that was the request. That got sent to the server. The server sends the HTTP response. And this is the first part of the response that we call the header. And you can see it's just a bunch of kind of metadata type information, like saying, hey, I got your message. Okay, I'm going to send you some stuff. Let me copy the rest of the response and let's see how much of it there is. Perfect. And then the server sends back all the friggin' HTML for our homepage. So that's actually just text data that the server sends back. And we can see that here in the network tab. I just wanted to grab the text because sometimes I think like all these tools obscure the simplicity of it. This is the, the HTTP response, the body of it. And you can see that it's built that URL for us. So that magic kind of happens in our server side code. Um, so let me just pause and check in there because that was actually a lot. I can talk through more of, of the flow, but I want to see if that makes sense to folks. And that's like the only parts of the flow that are relevant for the checkout page. The JavaScript and stuff that we're using, that's about creating a new cart item and then updating this number right here. But in terms of getting from here to the checkout page, that's all about the construction of this link and then Django doing its work and its magic. And that's the cool thing. Like I can take this link now that it has one in it, I can put it in an incognito tab and, and I get my data because we're grabbing everything from the server. Um, so let me just check in. Does that make sense to folks? And are there parts of that that it'd be good to go over again? And what questions do people have? And Alicia, I know that wasn't quite the part of the JavaScript that you were asking about, but I hope that that was relevant to your question about the flow for like, how does information get to the checkout page? And, and let me know too, if that was like a little too much. In no, I think, just, I think just for me, I, I did want to see the JavaScript again. So like, yeah. we have a button that says add to cart button and then yeah, like, let's do that. I guess there was, because for me, I had it all mixed up in my head that yeah. with the then part, we'd be sending the data to a new page from the Axios then. But yeah. you're, you're just saying, no, we have all the data in our database now. We just need to grab it from our database, which makes which makes sense, um, you know, through a different route. I just was not seeing it like right. that. So. Right. No, and I get what you're saying because there's two, there's two different ways. Like the JavaScript that we use, that Axios that makes that HTTP request. Um, where did it go? Because now I've opened all these things. Yeah, we definitely use the JavaScript to send data to the server, um, but that's not for the checkout page. That's for adding a new item to the cart. And that's why we've created this route here. And this, and this is really like an API endpoint because like this doesn't render an HTML page and send it back. And let's look at that flow. Um, so I've cleared the network tab. Um, I'll just refresh the page just so we can kind of start from the top. Um, I'm gonna clear this stuff because this is all the basic page load. And let's look at what happens when we add, and actually, 
just walking through that again, I just want to quickly point out, like we make a request and we load the JavaScript for Axios, right? Because the browser is going line by line through that HTML file and hits those script tags. And then it makes a request to the server for this file index.js. And we can see here, this is the request. Um, I can even take this URL and let me, where's a, there we go. So I'm in the console. Curl is this command line tool that can, you can make HTTP requests with. Like I can do um, HTTP google.com. And it sends me back the HTML for the Google website. Um, I guess it wants me to go to www.google.com. I'm gonna send an HTTP get request using curl to our Django server for that JavaScript file. And it sends it right back. And that's exactly what the browser is doing, right? And that's how we get that JavaScript. So that's kind of like the full flow of what's happening on page load. Um, oh, yeah. And this is before I'm we click about a button it, or anything. This is yeah. a completely separate question, but I'm wondering if I just completely overthought the search bar then, because the search bar, we already, to your point with this cart, it's just an illustration of something that's in our database. So could we have literally like on click, we grab the input value and then mm -hmm. we just send to our, um, well, I get, okay. So actually that is the question um, because how do we from that input value? Cause I just used a regular form, right? Mm -hmm. But that, that value is going to be rendered on a different page, right? Like if I'm on a kitchen page, I'm not going to be showing, you know, my, my couch on that kitchen page. So I was thinking, well, we would just send that data and put it there, but I need to know specifically what they're searching for. So how do you, cause there's a way to use JavaScript with the search bar, right? And I don't want to like ask you to do a whole new project here, but maybe just showing us what the difference is here of we put this value into the input, we grab yeah. that with JavaScript, we send it to Django, yeah. and now we do want it to go to yeah. a different, or we want to show that on a different form. Yeah, I get what you're saying. Yeah, let me, let me do this. Let's walk through the flow with the JavaScript that we have, and then when we kind of get to the point where we would handle that differently, um, I'll point that out. Yeah, because not to just keep... Because I'm wondering, do you have to do anything with the then? Because now I'm thinking about it, I'm like, well, maybe we could just grab the input, do our Axios request, send it to Django, just like we already do. And then in the view, um, we've grabbed that value. And now we just HTTP redirect to a different right. page, which is the search page. So, yeah. So you are kind of like half right and this is where things get a little tricky um and Raphael mentioned this the other day if we are using axios or any tool like that to make like an ajax request like an http request um and then the server sends back an http like response with a redirect code nothing's going to happen with that because the browser isn't aware that that happened because it's our JavaScript code that's talking, that initiates that request and is handling the response. Like, and that's kind of the magic of the form, like a form, like a form is like kind of some JavaScript and stuff baked into the browser. Um, so the, so we can, so like, there are a couple ways to do it, but like essentially, you're absolutely right about how the JavaScript code would work in terms of sending data to the server. Um, 
if it's an Ajax request, the server would then send data back. And if we wanted to then go re to a different page in our JavaScript code, we would have to do that, which- um, This is what I was looking for. I thought that's what I was asking for before, but now this is really what I'm asking for. <laughs> yeah, like, let's see here, what is it? Uh, yeah, and there are other patterns too. Like it's, that might not be the pattern that we wanted to do it with, but, um, but that is one way to do it. Okay, here we go. Window location replace. So window is like a special browser object. Like that's the browser window. Um, like if I do window location, this gives us the information about what URL the browser is currently at and all this interesting stuff. You can also do a history, which is really interesting. Um, which has the browser history. And I think there's like window.history.back. I think that's a function. Yep, and that moves us back in the browser history. We can also do window history forward. So how much extra code and work would I be asking you to do in a Friday evening to change that button to just to, to show that on a different page? Yeah. Uh, the very simple version of that would look something like this, like on the index. Um, I don't think this is really what you want, but just as a quick version here, let's create a new button. In fact, that's, that'll be better. Um, I'm just gonna paste the JavaScript right in there. And let's see, that's the home page, not the checkout page. And let me rename it. And what this is doing, by the way, notice that it says location replace. This is essentially replacing the value of the URL bar in the browser. And so then the browser does its thing. So we're using JavaScript to drive the browser. Um, let me expand to the end of input. Oh, I need single quotes for that word. Uh, yeah, I don't think that's quite, yeah. That's quite it either. Cause I was, I guess so, what I was asking is using the JavaScript, the, yeah. the then I want to put that somewhere else. Right. So that would look like this, like, like what we would do really is just here. Uh, I don't know why I needed to do that, but. So obviously you wouldn't want to use this. You would like use some data from your response to determine like what exactly this value should be. Yeah, so dot replace, that would be say, you know, like search, right? And that would be our search form where we want the data to be rendered. Um. Yeah, with the search bar, it might, we might end up doing it a little differently than the flow that you're describing because like, like what we would probably do is use it like a form in a lot of ways like because with the search the flow is like this you click the button the search data gets sent to the browser the browser sends back the search results like if i go to google and after this i, I apologize but i do have to get going so like what you're kind of talking about, because right now there hasn't been a page redirect, right? This has all kind of been Ajax, like we've seen with Axios and this um, autocomplete is done with DOM manipulation by JavaScript the same way that we've been doing 
uh, that we demonstrated earlier, but in a much more sophisticated way. And you can see there's JavaScript code, like this is the search query. Like if I took this and put this in a new tab, um, sorry, oh, that's a mess. Um, anyway, I think what you're talking about, like when I hit enter, then I go to this search results page, right? Yes. Yeah, or you hit the search button. So what happens here with uh, hitting the search button, the data, we're, we're not, we're sending our search request to the server. Like, I think it, it might be a form. Let's see how they do it. Uh, Is it a form and then like redirecting you to the search result or something? There's definitely a redirect request that happens. Um, you know, Google gets really fancy. I don't think I understood why, going back to what you're saying in the JavaScript, why couldn't you just put your, your search page there on the redirect section? You mean redirect like to the search results? And you're then, and where you put stack oh, and, and put the search. Why not just be your search page? You could, you wouldn't, you could, they might do it that way. Um, like what you probably want to do is if, like if you're doing it this way, you probably don't want to do a page redirect. Um, you probably just want to modify the DOM to display the results without modifying the page. Like what they do, because the big the the big thing actually, yeah. Let me let me walk through it again. So here's the big change. This autocomplete stuff, our URL has not changed, right? When I hit Google search, it does change. And so I think what's happening is when we click the search button, it might be using JavaScript, maybe it's a form. But what it's doing is it's sent like, you know, all right, I have to step back and I actually am not a hundred percent on how to make that happen with the search button. The form is the easiest result. You could also just use your JavaScript to force your browser to navigate to this page. But the way that it works is that like this URL with all this crazy stuff and maybe Wikipedia will have, um, I, I, <laughs> I can't even get a search result out of them. Um, this URL is kind of the heart of all the information. Like that's my search for cats. Let me just get rid of that stuff. There we go. Like what happens, the simple version, when I search for cats and I hit enter, what we wanna do is we want to tell the browser to go to this new URL. And then the browser makes a request to the server and then the server sends back the search results and the reason we want to do that is so that we have this URL with our search information so that we can kind of copy and paste it. I'm honestly not 100% on the mechanics of how they do this. And the truth is there's a couple different ways. Like you can do it with a form and you can do it a couple different ways with JavaScript. You, and you could do it the way that you mentioned, Alicia, I think. Um, and, and I apologize. If I can, I'll kind of read up on that to kind of like explain that flow a bit better. The essence of it though, is that when we hit this search button, we wanna point the browser to a new URL. And in that URL, we wanna have our like search query in there. Um, I don't know if that made sense. I might've jumped around a little bit too much towards the end there, I apologize. Uh, 
uh, well, I guess the honest answer is it makes sense to an extent, but it sounds like the solution I thought you were kind of showing us kind of sounds like what you're saying, don't actually do that. So, um, uh, so that makes sense, but I, I guess what I'm missing is that part that you're saying that you're not entirely sure about, which is what is the best way to do it? Yeah, yeah, I hear you. I mean, I think the best way to do it is, so I think the best way to do it I don't hope, I hope that didn't come across as like, you know, that this hasn't been helpful. I just hear you saying, well, this isn't the best way to do it. So I'm still missing. No, that. totally. Actually, this is, here's a good example. I think um, search. Input. Like imagine we've got a search box. Um, and then let's see. Uh, window.location.reload um give me one second was it reload or redirect sorry i'm getting um I just, it is I, asked, I got confused yeah it's reload for for the javascript command um I'm mixing like JavaScript and Python terms here. I apologize. Or uh, syntax. Let's see, I think it's inner HTML. So this is kind of the function that we would use, right? And where we would put it is. Um, what did I call that function? Initiate search. You no, know, and let's say we have input e equals search. We'll just call it search box. I'm not going to be able to get this working in the time we have, but I can at least illustrate it. Um, yeah, so the idea is we have a, a text field, an input. We have a button. When we click on it, we call this JavaScript function, uh, initiate search. That JavaScript function does two things, really. It grabs the, the search input element and gets the text from it, which I'm calling search term. Um, and let me break this into pieces, actually. We need an underscore on line 20, right? Search input. Um, I'm not, oh yeah, thank you. Awesome. Um, let's see, search term, search URL, da, 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 yep. So just to kind of walk through the steps here, we get the HTML element that, that has the text we want, the, what the search term the user has typed. And this happens when they click on the search button. Then we grab the text from that element. Then we construct the URL that will send that we want to like make a, a request from our browser to the server for an HTTP request. And this is where I was getting a little hung up on. Um, and, and this is a common format. Q stands for query. And you'll see that's what, what Google does, for example. Like it has this Q cats in the, as a query param. Um, and so we have this URL. And so we have this route somewhere, you know, that's like slash search. And we grab this information from the request and do whatever we need to on the back end to do the search. And then we can send the data back um, with, with a template. And, and this is 
the route that the browser is hitting. Because right here, what we do is we use our JavaScript to tell the browser to navigate here. So the browser then makes this request to the server. And that way, um, we have the browser navigating to, sorry, I'm just uh, fading a little bit at the end of the day. Um, like with Axios and an Ajax request, it's great for getting data, right? Like we can do this to get data, but for a search, what we really want is we usually want like the URL. Like there's an idea with the browser. Sam, this is the same functionality as what we were saying you wouldn't recommend, but you were just saying you wouldn't recommend because you don't need the Axios, right? Is is basically what you were getting at. Is that is that right? Basically, yeah. Like what we were and I, I was a little confused and the truth is, this might not be the best way. I'm not sure this way totally works. Um, so, you know, with Axios, like making a request and getting a response and then making the browser go to a new, make a new HTTP request and essentially do a redirect doesn't make sense. Like what we want to do is instead of making an asynchronous JavaScript request, we just want to drive the browser and then have the browser make that request to the server. Um, and the reason is essentially like we want our URL to have the search term in it. Um, because then the user can copy and paste that. And there's just a lot of conventions kind of built around that. Um, and I, I apologize. I don't think I'm explaining that in the best way right now um but this is one way to kind of do what what you're talking about and the other way to do this is is a form and honestly this is probably exactly how a form works like i never thought about it but i would bet a dollar that if we could somehow dig into like the source code of a browser and see what happens when you click on the submit button for a form that it is initiating some JavaScript, which uses window.location.reload. Um, I wouldn't bet like a thousand dollars, but I would bet like $10 that that's the case. Um, and $10, huh? <laughs> yeah, and it's, and I'm not doing a great job too, I think of describing like why we want to do this, but there's a lot around the idea of like a URL should capture the essential information that we need um, because URLs are easy to share and, and so much of our APIs are written with URLs and stuff. Um, and then this also lets the server send a redirect response if it needs to redirect the browser somewhere. So that's another advantage of this approach instead of like doing the search with, with the Ajax um, is driving it this way. Um, so yeah, just to- another the other yeah. question, I guess, to that is that route that you just showed us here, um, that I guess that wouldn't technically work for like our assessment, for example, because um, we needed to be able to, um, or I guess you'd have to create a whole new page for the API results if you wanted to. And then in that JavaScript function, basically say you know well actually now that i think about it to be able to search if this is something that we have in our database you'd have to have access to our database yeah so so lines 18 to 23 would would, would not work unless we know for a fact that what they're going to search is something that that is a, is a website that we have right well what we need is we need over here, we need something like this. Um, and then I, I uh, you know, I don't know, dot search uh, views. And then here, 
something like this. Okay, so that, that reload would still run back through our URLs. Okay, you're showing. Uh, something, something. I'm not sure why this got grayed out. I, oh, oh, because I, I need to. There we go. Um, okay, you pass in Q on line 93. Um, do we have to do that if it's a query param with like from, yeah, you're right. We might have to, yeah, I exactly. Know. I can't remember, that was a while, a while back. You're, probably, back. you're probably right. To, I have to go honest. back and review that, but now it makes sense because would you mind going back to your JavaScript file? Yeah, not at all. Um, and let me close What's out that? some things we don't need along the way. We don't need that. That redirect is going to be one of your URL routes. So that is going back yeah. to our server essentially yeah. saying, I want you to not, I don't want you to just go to this, you know, it's thinking in like client terms. I don't want you to just go to the site in programmer terms. I want you to go to this URL and then hit my controller for that URL and then do all of the logic there. Yeah. And, and we are, but, um, but yeah, are we I, passing? Are we passing that search input to the to the Django? Oh, okay, search term right there. Yep, we are because whether whether it's here or I mean, you know, okay, you could do sense. it. There there are, there are a couple reasons why we usually do it like this instead of in the URL. Like you know, I don't know. No one really does that. Um, for so. Yeah, this this query parameter Q here is how we pass that back to the server. And I feel like it took me a million years to get here. But the big difference of doing it this way with the browser is then when the server sends it, its response, the browser handles that response. And the server, in this case, we want the server to like send back an HTML page with a bunch of search results, right? And that's the big difference. Like using Axios, we could, you know, we could do like, uh, you know, search data Q uh, cats. And then what we would want to do here is modify DOM to display cat search results. You know, See, Adam, look at all this golden knowledge you're throwing at us. You yeah. had it. You had it, man. Yeah. Well, that's these are the two ways, right? With this way, this is essentially how autocomplete works. Like that's what's happening when we do this. It's they're using Axios or something like it to make a request to the server. And and they're listening for a key press. And then they're in that then when uh, when the response comes back. They're modifying the DOM to display the results. And a difference being that this doesn't change the URL. Um, you know, but like, I do this and ignoring all this crap. When I hit enter, it, it did something like this. It forced the browser to make that request because the server is sending back. It's not just sending back like JSON data that we're going to handle. It's sending back a full on HTML page. So we want the browser to make that request so it can handle this response. And that means we have this nice URL that I can send to my friend who's going to go visit Chicago. Um, yeah, this was really good. And, and I do apologize that I was a little roundabout with some of this stuff, but it sounds like it was helpful. Yeah, go back. Would you mind going back to your JavaScript again? Yeah, what's up? Okay, so 
you know, I'm just thinking with with this method, this three through thirteen, that's the one that wouldn't wouldn't change the URL like you like you were talking Correct. about. Correct. Right? Correct. Yeah. Whenever we're making uh, an AJAX request, like using Axios, it's not going to change the URL because the browser. The part of the browser that handles all that is not what's talking to the server. It's our JavaScript code. You know, we can we can do whatever we want in JavaScript. If we wanted to, we could do this. And then that would drive the browser. Um, right. But but that's not like gonna happen by default. Here oh. we're kind of driving the browser and then get all the nice default behavior that the browser has. So another question. Um for this first method up here, one through sixteen, you'd have to you'd have to parse the JSON. Yeah. What about for the eighteen through twenty three? Since you're not using Axios, but you are still using JavaScript, do you would you still? Yeah, that's yeah. a good question. So the HTTP response that comes back is totally dependent on the server. The reason that here the HTTP response that comes back as an HTML page is, is a bunch of HTML as opposed to JSON is just because that's what we've told the server to do because that's what we've designed this route and, and endpoint for. Did that make sense? Um, sort of. Like the short answer is- asking like- um... We wouldn't get JSON back this way we would get like an HTML page back. Uh, I think I was more talking about, although that's that's good, the sending back route. I guess I was more talking about when Django initially receives that search. Uh, so, um, so I guess for line eight, for 18 through 23, that would just be handled through the URL param, which would go to the controller. So then there wouldn't be any sort of confusion there. But for yeah. one through 18, we would have to parse the JSON coming in from Axios to Django, right? Yeah. And I think we can even okay. sorry to have to speak that out loud. No, no, no. It's that's good. That's that's the hard part is like walking through this stuff and really understanding it. Like it's a lot harder to walk through it step by step and understand each step because there's so many moving parts. I think we can do that right here. Uh, no, I, I have some issue in my code. Initiate search is not defined. I probably need to do hard refresh. Yeah, and that doesn't really do much maybe it's because- yeah, I didn't really write any code to handle. We don't really have any real Django code. Um, I think we can see. Uh, I think you'd have to have a search URL that that just says like hello or something, right? And then. Yeah, yeah. I could also there there could be a bunch of issues with this code because I was just kind of sketching stuff out. Um, yeah. So yeah, that helped me. That helped me so much. So awesome. I know I was asking you to stay later after everybody else went home, but that that has helped me so much, and hopefully everybody else here. So thank you, thank you, thank you. For sure. Um, using window location reload, um, Luis, I just saw your question about that. Um, yeah, I mean, so that looks just. You know, we would just do this window.location. There's no reason we would want to do this, but in terms of how it works, like this means whenever I click that add item button, it's going to do all this, but then it gets here and tells the browser, hey, make a get request to this URL. And, and the browser will make that request, and this new page will load. Um, let me refresh the page to make sure that JavaScript is updated. And it's not doing what I said it would, but I feel like it doesn't have the updated JavaScript. 
let's see what's going on. Let's look at the actual code. So, nope, that's there. Window location reload. Um, something, something is happening that I'm missing. Um, and I'm not a hundred percent what it is to be honest, but in theory, that's how you do it. And it should work fine. And I'm not sure why it's not, to be honest. Um, but that's more of like a debugging issue than, than a conceptual issue. Like there's just something I'm missing, but that that should work. That's I know that's a little bit of a, a cop out. Um, but but yeah. Um, yeah, Luis, what was your question? I think I, I missed that. 